Hello, welcome to this breakout session. I uh, want to say I really enjoyed Cara's uh, speech earlier about the climate pledge at Amazon, and I think that's a really exciting space, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few years there. I think that's really something to look forward to. So this session, the title is, so you've already launched Amazon Business, now what? Um, and this session is a slightly different take on other sessions um, that we've seen at ABX this year. Um, it's looking and it's really for procurement professionals who have already launched Amazon Business and they want to measure the success over the initial phase of the account um, and they want to look at what KPIs and what change management processes they can put in place to accelerate that success. So my name's Tom Poole, I'm a professional services manager here at Amazon Business. Uh, I help some of our most complex and largest customers in the UK implement Amazon Business as a purchasing solution. So let me set the scene for you. You've already launched Amazon Business six months ago. Uh, you've already seen that initial spike in activity, the spend and the users coming through onto the account. And now you want to take a bit more of an in-depth look, having had a bit of time to settle in around what has been happening in the account and how you can start to measure some of the success that you're seeing in the account and what more you can do to, pro to progress over the next few months to, the, to a year. So the first thing I want to talk about is to revisit the goals that you initially set when you implemented the Amazon Business Account and to revisit those and to really start to think about what KPIs can we put across those goals so we understand how successful we've been in the first few months of the account. So to do this, I'm going to structure it in five broad areas in, in which you might have uh, structured your goals when you first implemented and look at what KPIs we can set. So the first one of these is around spend visibility. And you might have set goals around you know, total number of users that you want to see in the account, total number of um, purchases and total volume of spend that you want to see in one place. And one of the KPIs that one of our, um, one of our customers, a, a big uh, engineering enterprise customer um, wanted to put was 100%. So they, they wanted to make all of um, their spend through Amazon business uh, visible in one place and 100% of it visible in one place. So previously they'd had um, multiple different consumer accounts and some Amazon business accounts on which users were purchasing and they want to um, consolidate that into one Amazon business account and they want 100% of that visible in one place. So that's one of the kind of KPIs that you can put in place on here. The second one I want to talk about is user engagement. And again, I'm going to use an example from one of our customers. Um, at this time, it was an, uh, a customer, uh, a big energy business, um, who used Amazon Business with a punch-out solution. And they wanted to measure user engagement by looking at three, three different numbers. So they wanted to look at the number of users that they'd actually communicated to, the number of users who had punched out to the Amazon Business account, and then the number of users who have actually spent in the last 12 months on the Amazon business account. So they wanted to set KPIs on those last two. First one, they wanted to set a KPI of 80%. So they wanted 80% of the users that they'd communicated to, to have actually punched out to the Amazon business account. And then they wanted 50% of the users they communicated to, to have actually purchased something in the first 12 months. So real tangible KPIs that you can set across these goals that um, really start to bring to life and allows you to start to measure some of the success. Right, moving on to the third thing. We're almost there, three out of five. User satisfaction. Again, a really key topic that a lot of our customers want to, want to measure and often struggle to measure even though it's one of the key goals. So here, one of our, um, again, one of our enterprise customers, they actually send out a survey to their end users, a very simple survey. Um, how satisfied are you with Amazon business, level one to five? And they want, on average, their users to choose four or above. So again, really simple way of starting to measure user satisfaction in the business account. So the fourth area, is around supplier consolidation. Again, a key goal that we often see time and time again 
um, customers who want to make um, and really want to consolidate the number of suppliers, the number of one-time suppliers especially, down in their systems. So that you know, every time you're loading on a new supplier, that's wasted time when you could have that all from one place. Now with the Amazon Business Account, you're able to put in place a policy where you can um, ensure that all of the invoices that you're getting on the account are coming from a single supplier of record. So again, another example here, um, we often see a level that uh, customers want to reduce the number of one-time suppliers down to 80% uh, of what it was before, or 80% reduction, I should say. Um, and here with the Amazon Business Account, you know, we can put in place that policy across all purchases in the account to make sure that you're only having one supplier of record for all of those orders across the marketplace. Now, that's all very well and good, you might say, Tom, but you know, I'm a procurement professional, I care about the costs. So let's talk about that. The fifth area and the fifth area that you might have um, set goals initially is around costs, of course, you're a pro procurement professional. So first of all, there are the hard costs. These are the costs that are easiest to measure and often the ones you think about first. Now, obviously, Amazon Business, uh, I'm gonna talk about in a minute the data uh, that is stored and how you can start to measure this. Um, but all of the costs were with regard to the item costs, the shipping costs, are all stored in that area. Uh, and I'll show you how to access them in a minute. So we've got the hard costs covered. What I want to cover in a bit more detail is the soft costs. And really, what I'm talking about here is the time that people spend searching for items, buying items, the time it takes to ship those items to you, um, you know, P2P processing and re reconciliation. That's really where a lot of the frustration uh, procurement departments see and um, we hear a lot of time is wasted uh, in, 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 in these areas and it's something that the business account can really help with. Um, so this is really where Amazon Business is trying to give back time to procurement professionals so they can spend that time, that valuable time, on more strategic and more worthwhile projects. Um, rather than just, you know, all of this one-time purchasing of all these tail spend items, they want, all they want is that to be processed effectively and in a streamlined manner so they don't have to think about it and waste time in these areas. So, we've talked about these five areas, we've talked about some of the KPIs that you can set across these areas. What I want to talk about now is how you can actually start to access some of the data to start to measure this yourself. So there's two tools that the Amazon Business Account provides for you where you can do this. The first one is the Business Analytics Reports. This is the raw data and it's a live feed of all of the purchases that you have in your Amazon Business Account across the organization that you can build filters with and build reports within Amazon Business. Uh, and then there's the second one, which is spend visibility. So spend visibility dashboards are an overlay on top of the business analytics data. And it's something that's available with Business Prime. So uh, you will have to get Business Prime to do this, but it's really powerful. You can dive into uh, different dashboards and drill down into different kind of categories of spend and users, uh, and those dashboards are created for you. So if you haven't already, I'd really recommend checking that out. But what I want to talk about in a bit more detail here is the business analytics reports. So this is, again, the raw data that exists in the account um, that is available for you to download. And what I'm going to show you now is a download into Excel that you can then start to cut with and play with um, in uh, ho ho however you want. So I understand that as procurement professionals, you're very data conscious and you want to be able to do that. So let's have a look. So this is a video and this is a download of um, customer data in an Amazon business account. And you'll see here um, the vast range of fields that are recorded. So there's actually over 70 different fields that are recorded in the account. And you can see that across uh, this Excel file that I'm showing you now. And you can see information like the username, order um, cost and order prices, the, uh, the users who have actually placed those purchases. Um, and you can actually start to see some of the order details. So this again is a live feed of the orders that are getting placed in the account. And you can start to see some of the order details. So again, um, as we scroll across this feed, uh, you can start to see some of the product information. So the title name and the category that that um, item sits in. And you can start to then drill down that and we'll see some of these reports that are easy to build in a minute. Um, and then also you can start to see uh, if you've got any restrictions that are in place on the account. So you can see a lot of items here have been purchased which have a restriction policy on it. 
Now I just want to pause because restrictions, that is something where a, a notification is displayed to buyers, but um, you know, there is, um, they are actually able to purchase those items. Now you are able to put blocking policies in place, but that's um, where items that have been restricted have been purchased. But I just want to move on and look at some of the, the um, reports that are able to be built here. So here is a report of um, items that have been purchased over the last 12 months. And we can see there's a big spike at the beginning of the year. And then there's a low point around where the COVID pandemic hit, uh, where spend dropped off in our account. Um, but you can see the number of orders and the number of items that have been purchased. So really quickly, you can start to build some of these reports for yourself to start to drill into some of this information. The next one is around the users that have been purchasing in the account. So here you can see very simple pivot report showing the top spending users in the account, how much they've purchased. And you can see that these are the people you might want to contact and we'll talk about that in the next section. This section is a quick report we've built around the categories of products in the account. And you can see here the top three categories actually contain 50% of the spend. So maybe we want to drill down into that a bit more detail. Um, again, giving great spend visibility across the business account. The final report here is showing those restriction policies. So I'll just touch on that again. You can see here a lot of the spend has actually been on restricted items. Now again, restrictions, you are able to buy those items. You are able to also put in place blocking policies with uh, the larger policy, the, 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 the larger subscription to Business Prime. But here we're seeing, you know, there's a lot of spend in place on those restricted items. Maybe we want to rethink those, some of those restrictions um, to make sure that buyers aren't being confused when they start to purchase those items. So hopefully that gives you a quick insight into the power of the data that is actually stored behind the Amazon business account and how you can use that data to start to measure the success. So we've had a look at the, um, the goals, we've revisited them, we've looked at some of the KPIs that you can set across those goals, and we've looked at how you can start to measure some of the, um, the, the data to actually start to build your own KPIs. Now what I want to do is think about how we can start to accelerate that success that we've seen in the first few months. And to do that, um, I really want to think about three key recommendations that, you, that we have uh, to help you, you know, accelerate that success that we've already seen. The first one is enlisting champions throughout the business. So I just want to pause here and you know, we've, we've already seen in the data uh, who are the top spending users. That's really powerful information. We can use that, start to reach out to some of these top spending users and start to um, almost employ them as your Amazon business advocates across the business. So you can start to um, really build some advocates that are going to be the go-to people for other people in the organization to contact uh, and to really start to spread the message and spread the good news. And that brings me on to the second point, which is communication. So communication is something that we can't stress how important it is. So you've had that initial period in the account. There will have been a, um, a bit of a lull in communications perhaps since that initial launch. Now what's really important to do is to start to spread some of the good news and some of the initial successes that we've seen in the account out to the user populations. Again, one, of the, um, one example of this that we've seen with one of our customers was um, a procurement professional who was able to spend uh, four hours less per week um, in uh, these ordering processes uh, through using the Amazon business account in the first few months. So really powerful insight that we should be sharing across the organization as a real win that we've seen in the first few months. The third thing I want to talk about is um, looking for anecdotes um, underneath the data and to iterate where we can. So, you know, at Amazon, we're very data conscious, as I'm sure you are as well, and we like to record um, a lot of data, but often it's the stories behind the data that really feed into and something that we should be paying just as much attention to as the data itself. So examples of this are um, approval workflows. So maybe you've got in place approval workflows for different groups on the account. And you know, we've seen examples of customers who have maybe three levels of approval in that approval chain. And you know, each time uh, one of those levels of approval is engaged, they receive an email. 
that person then has to approve the, um, the order before that goes up to the next level. So maybe some people are getting frustrated because their orders aren't being placed and, and aren't being processed quickly because of that you know, few levels of approval. So maybe we can look at um, what anecdotes are coming to us so we can start to tweak those approval levels so people can really start to get their orders quicker and make use potentially of the business prime and fast shipping uh, and all those benefits in the account, which is why you signed up in the first place. So maybe that's one thing we can think about. Another place to look for anecdotes might be in the curation policies. So maybe, again, looking back at the data we've, that we've just had a look at in the account, um, we saw a lot of the spend there was on restricted items. So restricted items, you know, people are able to purchase those, but it gives them that notification that says, you know, this item might not be appropriate, it might not be compliant, but you are able to purchase it. Now, we might find that confusing and buyers, end buyers might find those restrictions confusing. So maybe we should revisit that, just have a look at what restrictions we've put in place on the account to make sure that going forward, uh, buyers aren't confused. And if, you know, we might start to hear some of those anecdotes coming back to us. Another one, uh, and this is the last one, uh, and I know it's getting towards the end of this breakout session, um, is the uh, um, items that we might want to surface to our end user population more than other items. So we can actually uh, prefer certain items, items that you might want your um, end users to see above other items and put them to the top of search results. So we can tweak with this and play with this over the first few months of the account and really start to look for. The, the key thing here is to look for the anecdotes that you're hearing back from your end users and to iterate the solution where possible. And it's worth saying that small changes here will make a really big difference. So I want to finish there and I just want to say thank you very much for joining this breakout session. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to, I know we're near the end here, but something really exciting coming up is our ABX Awards. Uh, so really excited to see who are the recipients of those awards. I know it's become an annual feature at this event now. Thank you very much for listening.